Welcome to Telma's video training on finding and troubleshooting the Telma ABS interface. In this video, we'll check the input and output signals at the Telma ABS interface. This will be testing the control side of the Telma system. We'll also review the operation of the ABS interface to make sure it is functioning properly. Two types of ABS interface may be found, which we'll describe later part number JC241105 and a JC241103. We'll need a few tools for this test. First is a digital multimeter. We use a Fluke Model 110. A standard 12 volt test light may also be used for most tests. We start out by locating and identifying the Telma ABS interface. This box will be mounted inside the cab and can vary in its exact placement depending on the installer. It can be in the doghouse, next to the steering column, or can be behind the driver or passenger seat. Next, we should identify which box we have, a JC241105 or a JC241103. We'll first discuss the purpose of the ABS interface. It's designed to allow the anti-lock braking system, or ABS, to control the Telma system and to turn off the Telma system automatically when the vehicle comes to a stop. The Telma will turn on only when the truck is moving above approximately two miles per hour and it will turn off when there is a wheel slip condition or ABS event or if there's an ABS malfunction, ABS dash warning light on. Next, we'll go to the ABS interface and remove the connector so we can check the inputs and outputs. We will now use our multimeter to check that each pin has the correct signal. We can also use the 12 volt test light for a quick check, but not to verify all of the pins. To test this box with a multimeter, we'll need a known ground and positive 12 volts for our multimeter leads. The main power for the ABS interface is at pin 11 and pin 13. Pin 11 is battery ground and pin 13 is ignition positive voltage, so we'll use these pins for our test. First, we verify that these leads have the correct voltage across them. The ignition will need to be on, but the vehicle does not have to be running. Here we see 12 volts. Pin 1 should have ignition plus from the ABS warning light relay. If there is no power on pin 1, we can investigate the ABS warning light relay. Leaving the negative lead in pin 11, we see 12 volts at pin 1. Next, we'll remove the negative lead and put the positive lead into pin 13 to test the ground pins. You may also use the continuity tester function on your multimeter to test the grounds, but one multimeter lead would need to be in pin 11 in that case. Next, we'll check pin 2 to make sure there is no signal on this pin. This is an optional disable pin. When pin 2 gets a ground, it will disable the Telma system. And pin 15 should be grounded when there is no ABS event or wheel slip. When brakes are applied, the air pressure sensors send a ground signal to input pins 22, 23, 24, and 25. If all other pins in the ABS interface have the correct signal, pins 6, 7, 8, and 9 will output 12 volts positive to posts numbered 1, 2, 3, and 4 of the relay box mounted on the frame. The last pin to check is the vehicle speed signal at pin 4. A digital multimeter set to AC volts is needed to check the vehicle speed signal input. This should have an AC signal above 3.5 volts, JC241105, or a signal above 1 volt AC for JC241103. Once the leads are inserted, the truck will need to be driven above 2 miles per hour to verify the voltage is correct. We have now verified that every pin in the ABS interface is operational. For further troubleshooting assistance, Use the universal wiring diagram available on our website in the quick reference guide. While doing this test, if you have any deviations to the results we gathered here, 
please consult our technical support webpage at www.telmausa.com or call us at 800-797-7714. Thank you for watching.